Hi friends, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I am going to be reviewing and trying out all of the milk makeup products that I got in my last Sephora gratis. And I'm also going to try some other items that I also got in my previous gratis haul, like the Urban Decay Born to Run palette and the Bobbi Brown lippy that just came out. But yeah, I just want this to be kind of like a sit down, get ready with me, very like chill type of video today. We're talking makeup. But before we get started in this video, please don't forget to subscribe down below for new videos every single week and let's get to it. Alrighty then, so to start the video, I am going to thoroughly prep and hydrate my skin just because like i mentioned in my previous sephora gratis haul i am a little afraid of matte products just because i'm so dry i have to always make sure to like apply my moisturizers my oils like all the hydration i can get i need it <laughs> because that's what my skin requires so when a product tells me that it is a matte formulation that it's going to mattify me like i i do feel like i'm a little bit hesitant when it comes to the matte products so even by the names like this is the milk makeup blur plus set matte loose setting powder and also in my gratis i got the milk makeup matte foundation and milk makeup flex concealer so all of these products are matte but i still want to try them out on my dry skin i had a few of you guys request this video so i'm just going to do it and then maybe try some of the other products that i got in my gratis haul so to start things off i am going to prep i'm going to be using my marc jacobs Invisible Undercover Perfecting Coconut Face Primer. And I also already hydrated my skin using the It Cosmetics Secret Sauce Moisturizer. And I think I used the Ulla Hendrickson Banana Eye Bright Cream, which they're both amazing products. Like my skin feels extremely hydrated and plumped and I feel like it's good to go. So that being said, let's give this a good shake. Get some on the palm of my hand here. Uh, and I want to avoid ruining the brows. So the next step that I am going to be taking is that I'm going to be setting my primer with the Marc Jacobs Recover Perfecting Coconut Setting Mist. And this is really just to add the benefit of even more hydration. So by priming my skin with a hydrating face primer, it is going to allow my foundation, my matte foundation, to glide on a lot easier on the skin and to make it more skin-like to kind of counteract how matte the foundation is by having all of these like luxurious hydrating ingredients in here mixed with this foundation so that's the reasoning behind all of this like meticulous preparation work but let's go ahead and finish priming the face so we can move on to our foundation products it just smells so luxurious i love i love this setting spray it's the bomb i think it's the number one hydrating setting spray in the makeup game like i'm already looking super dewy like on a whole nother level dewy but again this is what we want to make these matte products work for the dry skin now that my skin is prepped i'm going to take my sigma f80 kabuki brush and i am going to grab about a quarter size of this foundation here that much and we'll see if we need to use more i am the shade medium and i say we'll see if we need more than this because I love my full coverage. I thought it was going to be a little bit more moussey, more of like a whipped texture. I thought this was going to feel like the Giorgio Armani face fabric, which is like definitely like a whipped type of like moussey texture, but this is actually very different. Well, let's go for it. Oh yeah. So immediately <laughs> I see coverage. I see some serious, serious coverage. I feel like the brush is doing a pretty good job at blending this foundation into the skin. Okay, great. So right now it's on one half of my face and I immediately love the coverage because I love my full coverage. I do tend to have some discoloration around my mouth area and like around my eyes and whatnot, but the coverage is there. I do feel like the foundation does look skin-like and skin-like is a very relative word because a natural foundation look kind of varies between person to person, but I really like how it's sitting on the skin. It is not separating and surprisingly enough, I actually look very luminous and dewy and I 
I think that had to do with me making sure to thoroughly prime my skin because like we talked about, we did want to counteract how matte I was anticipating the blur foundation to be. All right, well, I feel like I can't actually feel this foundation on my face. I still have so much product left. I was really, I underestimated just how much coverage I was going to get from one layer. So because of that, I'm going to use my beauty blender to absorb the excess product just like that and give me a more natural skin-like finish because a beauty blender will always absorb all the excess product, which is something that it is known for. It will always, every single time, give you the most natural layer. Okay, well, great. Thankfully, I was like able to remove some of that excess product So it feels like I am wearing less foundation Especially around like the center of my face like right here was where I felt the most weight from the foundation um, I feel like I still want to build a little bit more coverage on the sides of my face um, right now I do have some breakouts and I want to be able to cover that up. Great. So that is that. I am very satisfied with the finish of the foundation. I feel like we did a really good job in priming. Therefore, right now it is looking so skin-like and very radiant, which is awesome for a matte blur foundation, you know what I mean? Excellent. So next step, we are going to use the Milk Makeup Flex Concealer and I'm going to use it to illuminate my under eye area as well as my T-zone and then we will see how it blends with the foundation. And I'm also questioning if one of these products is more matte than the other. Awesome. So to blend this out, I'm going to use a beauty blender on this side and then I'm going to use my F80 Kabuki brush on the other side. And that blended in perfectly. Seamless, effortless. That took like no work whatsoever. And it looks phenomenal. Not bad. Okay, well, I felt like the brush was a little streaky. So I'll just go ahead and use my beauty blender on this side as well. I am so surprisingly pleased and happy with how my complexion is looking. I feel like I just put on like two layers of Born This Way foundation and not the Milk Makeup Blur foundation. Like who would have known that I would be able to get this result from these blurring mattifying products. But now that we have tested the Blur Foundation and the Flex Concealer on their own, we are now going to set these products using the Milk Makeup Blur Plus Set Setting Powder. And this guy just launched. It is the new of the complexion products so I am especially intrigued to see how this works and it does come with a sponge I don't feel necessarily inclined to use it ah, this is like the second time I just I have ripped the lid off of this product so just because I'm used to it I'm going to tap off some product onto the lid here because I'm going to use my brush to pick it up. Honestly, that just made a mess and I feel like it would have been so much easier had I just dipped the sponge in here. I'm gonna use my brush. This is my Sigma F35 highlighting brush. I'm just going to set the under eye here. My smile lines. So this is what my complexion looks like after I have set my under eyes as well as my T-zone. And I feel like the foundation and the concealer still look radiant. They're still full coverage. I don't see any streaks behind. And I still feel like my foundation and concealer look very skin-like, which is great. The powder itself, I do feel like it was very weightless. It feels like I didn't even set my face. You know, sometimes when you set you, your face, you have like that really like heavy feeling around like the eye area. I feel like it's weightless and it didn't add more weight to my makeup which is awesome so the first color that i'm going to apply on my crease is going to be riff and i'll be using a large blending brush for that all right so this is awesome the eyeshadow is going on so evenly and it's also blending out very easily super effortless and i feel like the flex concealer by milk makeup is doing a really great job at holding on to this eyeshadow what's also cool is that the eyeshadow is not patchy in any way and I'm going to be picking up Wonderless right here, which is this very beautiful green. And we're just gonna go for it. Wow, guys, this is already so pretty. And I think I want to accentuate this eye look a little bit. So I'm going to use Big Sky and I'm going to apply that right in the center of my eyelid. So that eye in the middle, that is beautiful. I love it so much already. This is exactly what this eye look needed. 
I love that. That is cute. Okay. A little bit of fallout, nothing crazy. Awesome. For bottom lash line, I am also going to use Rip, but I'm going to use a shorter, stubbier blending brush. And I'm going to make sure my application of this is pretty low on my bottom lash line. To make my bottom lash line a little bit more smoky, I'm going to use Good As Gone, and I'm going to apply that using my Sigma smudging brush. To intensify my bottom lash line just a little bit more, I am going to use my Sephora Collection Long Lasting Cold Pencil and this is the shade 06 Deep Brown. Great, and now we're going to have a little inner corner action and I'm going to use Nylon by MAC. This is a single eyeshadow. It is definitely my absolute favorite inner corner. I mean, would you look at that? That is like... <laughs> really nice. And next up, to complete my eye look, I'm going to be using the new Kat Von D Dagger Tattoo Eyeliner. Yeah, so that's really nice and short. <laughs> that is a nice sharp wing. I am having a very easy time getting my eyeliner on and I love the nice sharp wing. Overall, I am very happy with the shape of my eyeliner. I feel like with this new tip, it did help a little bit, especially like right at the very edge of the wing to kind of give it the flick. And to fill it in, I'm going to be using my CoverGirl liquid eyeliner. This guy looks just like this. To finish off this look, I'm going to be using my Bobbi Brown Lux Liquid Lip High Shine and this is the shade Italian Rose Number no. 3. Oh my god, this is so much pigment. This is like a lot of pigment. Alright, so this is what it looks like and it is like intense. It is intense, but I like that it's not sticky. It actually feels fairly lightweight actually. For this look, I would have picked out a more nude lipstick, but for the sake of trying these products, I just went ahead and tried the Bobbi Brown Luxe Liquid Lipstick. And I gotta say, I really do like the feel of it. I don't feel like it's too heavy. I love the intensity. I love that it does have like a high shine type of thing to it. So to conclude my thoughts on these products, I feel like Milk Makeup did an exceptional job on their complexion products. I feel like the foundation is on point. I feel like the concealer is on point. I was even able to use the Flex Concealer as my eyeshadow base and it worked perfectly. Perfectly. It didn't even give me any problems. My eyeshadow was pigmented and the coverage of these two complexion products are amazing. I particularly liked how the blur foundation stayed looking very radiant and glowy, very skin-like as opposed to matte because I was really anticipating for the foundation to be like so matte and that I was going to have to use like a ton of setting spray to bring some moisture into the foundation but no it was like actually the opposite. I feel like I had to mattify some parts of my face like the t-zone to avoid looking overly dewy and with the translucent powder i also had a really great experience in trying it on my face but even though it is a matte formula i still felt like my makeup was set that it was not going to move and i didn't feel overly matte overly dry at any point so all in all i have to give these products a 9 out of 10 just because I really loved that they actually do work for dry skin. I also do have to say that the Born to Run palette by Urban Decay is really awesome. I love the color assortment. I really love how the shimmers went on. I also really liked how the matte eyeshadows went on. Everything was just so creamy and so effortless. So that's when you know you have a great palette. It's when you have such an easy time blending it and just doing your thing. I also really liked the Kat Von D tattoo liner. I feel like I would still do like my tattoo eyeliner just because they're so similar but great concept nonetheless and of course our bobby brown luxe liquid lip was really amazing high intensity high shine everything that's in the name is pretty much what you're gonna get and that does it for this video thank you so much for watching if you like this video and found some value from it please don't forget to drop me a like and also don't forget to subscribe for new videos every single week like always i want to thank you so so much for watching i'll see you on the next one